Hi, it's Gabrielle, and today I'm going to start discussing what attachment trauma is and how it affects your intimate relationship. I'm a licensed mental health professional, relationship expert, and the author of The Power Couple Formula. Over the next couple of videos, you're going to learn what attachment trauma is, how trauma creates attachment disorder, and when you need to seek professional help to resolve attachment trauma. If you like this video, please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. If you're enjoying this video, please like it and share it. And you can also go to my website, thepowercoupleformula.com for lots more information on how to build an amazing relationship. Attachment trauma is a term that gets thrown around a lot in our culture without really much understanding of what it really means or the impact of attachment trauma in a relationship. Maybe you've wondered if the trauma that you've experienced in your adult relationships is connected in some way to the trauma that you experienced in earlier life. You might have had some very painful experiences in relationship, and you might be wondering why your relationships feel so fragile. You might have been called names by your partner, like you're codependent or overly emotional or even crazy. You might wonder why you seem to keep experiencing trauma in relationships as an adult. You might also feel frustrated or disheartened because many relationship tips you've learned to improve your relationship don't seem to work for you. You might be thinking, should I see a psychologist or a psychiatrist? How do I deal with trauma? Does trauma prevent me from having a good relationship? You probably have a load of questions about attachment trauma, so let's get started. You've probably heard of attachment theory and the attachment styles, but you might be wondering specifically about how attachment trauma fits into that. To understand attachment trauma, let's talk about trauma first by itself. Trauma occurs when our nervous system gets overwhelmed as a result of a life-threatening, frightening, or dangerous event. And you might experience that event in one of three different ways. It could be that you experienced the event directly, that it happened to you personally. It could also be that you heard about the event from someone else, or you might have witnessed the event. So notice that it doesn't necessarily have to be something that you personally experienced. What makes this trauma isn't so much the nature of the event itself and how scary or dangerous it was because people will respond very differently to the same event. What makes it trauma is that your nervous system was unable to process your personal experience of the event. Let me explain what I mean by overwhelm. We're processing information that we're receiving from our environment all day long. It might be something that excites us or something that relaxes us, but whatever it is, it's important that what we're taking in from the outside not be too much for us. If it's too exciting or too scary or too dangerous, that can be a problem. There's a difference between watching a scary movie and feeling a little bit afraid versus somebody running after you with a butcher knife. The first one might be a little bit scary, but enjoyable even in a certain way. And the second one is probably overwhelming to the point that it's gonna create all kinds of problems in your mind and body. When your nervous system is getting overwhelmed, you either will do something to get out of the problem, like running away, or if possible, you'll fight back to protect yourself, or at the very least, you'll um, play dead like a possum, which is like a freeze response. Those are the three strategies that our nervous system needs in order to cope with an overwhelming event. What happens with trauma is that we can't use one of those three strategies. The energy can't move through. Imagine you're trapped in a room with your dad as a kid and your dad's yelling at you and you can't get away, you certainly can't fight back, and you can't hide or freeze because he sees you. That's an example of something that could have been overwhelming and your nervous system was unable to adapt or respond. So just to recap, trauma is when we have an overwhelming experience that's frightening or dangerous that our nervous system is unable to process because we can't do something to move the energy through. That energy becomes trapped in your body and easily gets triggered in any subsequent frightening or dangerous situation. Studies show that any of the following forms of abuse or household problems are associated with childhood trauma. Physical abuse, emotional abuse or sexual abuse, emotional or physical neglect, 
having only one or no parents, exposure to alcohol or drug abuse in the home, an incarcerated family member, a mother who is subject to violent treatment, or a household member who is chronically depressed, mentally ill, institutionalized, or suicidal. Attachment trauma can also happen as a result of the loss of a parent or other important attachment figure. Remember from our previous videos that an attachment figure is someone with whom you share a special bond and whom you rely on in moments of distress. In childhood, it's usually your parent, but it could also be a different important person as well. Attachment trauma can happen as the result of two different types of scenarios. One is the frightening or dangerous experience happens in relation to the attachment figure. So your attachment figure is doing something that is life-threatening or truly frightening, scary, or dangerous. But the other kind of attachment trauma happens when we experience an overwhelming event, such as being the victim of a natural disaster or a car accident, and there's no one there to comfort us. Studies show that we experience trauma when we have no support, no one to comfort us or soothe us or regulate us in the aftermath of an overwhelming experience. The way trauma works is when we have someone there with us to help us process the terrifying event, we usually don't get traumatized. For instance, they did studies on the victims of Hurricane Katrina back in 2005 and found that those people who had someone there to comfort them after the hurricane didn't get traumatized. These hurricane victims had either been seriously injured or they had had all their belongings swept away by the storm, but because a friend or family member was there to comfort them, they didn't experience trauma. It was the people who had to face the catastrophe alone who developed trauma. So children or adults who experience something scary or dangerous and are lacking an attachment figure to help them through it are more likely to develop trauma. Regardless of how attachment trauma occurs, it affects the brain of the developing child. When a child is traumatized, the child's brain produces a greater than average amount of cortisol. And cortisol, as you probably know, is the stress hormone, which is useful in the short term when we need a burst of energy in order to you know, get away from something dangerous, it gets us moving, it activates our nervous system. But when cortisol is activated in the long term, it can do irrevocable damage to the brain. Long-term cortisol activation actually damages and kills our brain cells, and it can cause a child to develop lifelong trauma-induced behaviors. These usually fall into one of three categories. Those are either gonna be lashing out, by which we mean that fight response where the child's trying to fight back, getting out, by which we mean fleeing or running away, or checking out, which is a kind of dissociation, uh, which can be connected to freezing. The reason the child starts to exhibit these behaviors is because their nervous system is still trying to process the trauma. They weren't able to exercise these natural self-defensive responses at the time, and it's like they're stuck in the nervous system replaying over and over again. In our next video, we're gonna talk more specifically about the way attachment trauma affects adult intimate relationships. As I'm talking about attachment trauma, you might feel a lot of memories flooding into your awareness of bad relationships or perhaps childhood experiences. And this can be a very difficult topic to explore. And I wanna make it clear that if you're struggling and feel like you're having a mental health emergency, it's important that you go to your nearest emergency room or call 911. It's also important that you reach out for professional help from a licensed therapist so that you can work through your attachment trauma and build a healthy relationship.
please refer to the show notes of this video for some resources that can help you if you are in trouble. So I'd like to hear from you in the comments below as we talk about these three self-defensive strategies, which one do you tend to use more when you feel triggered? Do you tend to be a fleer and trying to run away when things get tough? Are you a fighter, somebody who wants to fight it out or until you get to that resolution? Or do you tend to freeze and go MIA? get dissociated, distracted, or just kind of collapse. Leave me your comments below about which defensive strategy you tend to use when you feel activated. I wanna end on a positive note for this part one of the attachment trauma videos to let you know that healing is possible. You can overcome traumatic attachment and create a wonderful relationship. And I'll see you in the next video.